Hi guys, welcome to another video. Now, I hope you're all staying safe. We are obviously still at home and I hope you are too. In the meantime, I thought I would make a little video about my Audi R8, seeing as we haven't spoken about it in a while. And also, because I just got a, a bill for the car. So it just had its maintenance done, its service. So I thought it would be an interesting time. It made me think about how much the cars cost me total and how much the changes I want to do to it will cost me. So I thought I'd make a little video about the real costs, all facts, nothing hidden about what it cost me to own an Audi R8 V10 plus 2014 model with a manual gearbox. So let's just get started. I bought about 40,000 miles on it. It is a silver Audi R8 V10 Plus, 550 horsepower, but what makes it special is the fact that it has a manual gearbox. So it made it worth quite a bit more than a S-Tronic gearbox, which is the dual clutch version of the car. And there's only, to my knowledge, I believe seven manual V10 pluses of that era, the facelifted ones in the UK. So I ended up actually buying my car in an auction. Don't know if you guys followed the whole story, but we posted about that. And I bought the car for 63,000 pounds in an auction. It was an auction which uh, takes a commission afterwards. So the first obviously main block cost of the car, 63,000 pounds. Then on top of that, there was uh, just over 3,000 pounds commission to be paid to the auction house. So what the car actually cost me was more around the lines of 66,000 pounds. So yeah, that's just something that, you know, I never really spoke about as the first kind of hidden cost you guys maybe didn't realize with the car. Still think I got a fantastic deal on it and that the car's actually gone up in value since, seeing as it is so rare. So I'm confident in the buy. Um, it's, you know, naturally aspirated V10. It was, it was a steal, I think, for that price. Now from there, there were a few other things that I then did to it and a few costs I've now had. The main one afterwards for me was obviously insuring the car. I'm 23 years old, so insuring a 550 horsepower V10 car in the UK is not the easiest thing in the world. So, I mean, it's a, it's a pretty gross amount, but I figured, you know, why not uh, talk about it? But I pay £4,500 a year to insure the car. So that then gets added on top of the 66000 So we're already above the £70,000 mark. So this is when you start to see things ramping up. The maintenance of the car, as soon as I got it, I didn't really have anything to pay straight away. It had brand new tires. It was in really good condition. So there wasn't, there weren't any hidden costs as far as that was concerned. They're known to be pretty reliable. You know, you just need to do the service every once in a while and we'll get onto what the service cost me in a little bit. I, I then went and, and changed the exhaust of the car. Now exhausts vary in different prices. Obviously you can, you know, you can go get some lower quality stuff, which may cost you, you know, 1500, 2000 pounds, something like that. But in average, if you want to go for the, for a good exhaust, I went for a top of the range Zen Rage exhaust. looking at around 5,000 pounds. I'm really happy. I think it's something that's so important, you know, just whenever you're modifying anything that's linked to the engine to just go for the best possible quality because um, a lot of these cars are now out of warranty, 2014 cars, so you don't want to really risk anything of the sort. But the fact that it's out of warranty does mean that you can kind of uh, mess around with it a little bit more, which makes it quite fun. So add another 5,000 pounds to the bill with the exhaust. Now then other changes we're going to be doing. So I'm just going to run you through the average cost for these. I'm going to be wrapping the car. And so a wrap of the type that I feel like I'm going to be doing, and we'll be talking about that in a little bit, is fairly expensive. So you're looking again at around five to maybe 7,000 pounds, depending on the quality of the wrap. I'm going to go for a top of the range wrap in the end. I'm going to put the Instagram of the guys who are going to do it down below. And uh, so yeah, so you can add that on top of the final bill as well. And then there's rims. So rims, it really varies. You can go from any you can spend 1500 pounds and you can spend 10,000 pounds on a pair of rims. So I think we should just round it up to again around, let's say 6,000, 5,000, 6,000 pounds for rims and wheels to go with it. Because if you're changing the size of the wheels, that's something you need to take into consideration as well. And then I'm not going to talk about wings, canards, interior, you know, steering wheel, all that stuff yet, because yeah, they're, they're just very niche things that most people aren't going to want to do. But the average stuff that people will do is potentially wrap the car, change the rims, change the exhaust. So that's 
that's why I'm adding those in here. Once you've done all that, you start driving the car for fair amount. Eventually, you're gonna have to take it for a service. And I've actually got the bill here for the service that I just had done on the car for 40,000 miles. Now that ended up costing exactly 1,500 pounds, which hurts for sure, you know, but it's a supercar. You have to do the service every once in a while and it's best that the car is in perfect net. So took it to, you know, some of the best in the game, RE Performance. They do all the R8s. They are absolutely fantastic and they've kind of done the whole works on it. So I'll tell you all the parts that had to be bought for that 1,500 pounds. Obviously there was an oil change, oil filter, drain screw, drain washer, pollen filter, spark plugs, air filter, fuel filter, brake fluid, transmission oil, transmission drain washer, and then obviously all the labor that goes along with that. So yeah, I mean, fantastic to have that done. Obviously it's something you just have to do. You have to bite the bullet when you commit to one of these cars, you know that there's gonna be something you're gonna have to deal with. So you add that on top, 1,500 pounds, and you kind of come to the final bill of the car. I don't know if we've calculated what that is, but there will be a number on the screen right here so that you guys can see exactly how much that costs. That's obviously not counting fuel and on some cars, on other cars, you would maybe have to count depreciation. But seeing as this is a rare car, that's not really a worry with this at all, especially that I really haven't put that many miles on the car yet. I kind of want to get it all done with wheels, wrap and everything. And then we're going to just really make the most of the car. But yeah, that is the full cost of what my Audi R8 V10 Plus manual cost me. It's a fantastic car. I think it's, it's worth it. It's a car that you can do a lot of miles in and it is a reliable car. So costs like the maintenance, hopefully touch wood shouldn't be recurring too, too often. And there are a lot of cars that are a lot worse. You know, you hear horror stories, for example, of a friend had a 599, he had a screw go wrong in one of the brake discs on his 599. He had to replace one small piece, but in order to do that, he had to replace on the other brake disc round, round back and it ended up costing seven and a half, seven and a half thousand pounds a wheel. So those are Horror stories now with a car like an Audi R8, the fact that it's built by Audi, by a brand for which parts are fairly accessible. They were built in bulk, that helps a lot. When you start getting into more niche cars, even then are potentially cheaper, you know, like for example, when I had my Lotus, it's harder to get parts sometimes if you've got the slightly rarer models for those. So that's where it really adds up. But um, the beauty of the R8 V10 Plus manual is it's a very rare car for which parts are very accessible and service costs are pretty accessible as well. So it's kind of the best of both worlds, which is why it's a car that attracted me so much. So yeah, I hope you found this interesting. I mean, it's just a little video whilst we sat here at home I thought I'd make. I'm always interested in hearing what it is. I want it to be completely transparent with you guys on what the car cost, and I hope you find it interesting. Thank you for watching this video. Let me know if there's any more videos of this type that you would like to see, and I'll be uh, yeah catching up with you guys very soon. Make sure you're subscribed if you aren't already. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye.